Hello and welcome back to Mojo Mondays. We're going to be reacting to the top 20 saddest moments in cartoons because I like to think of myself as a bit of a cartoon connoisseur, hence why I'm dressed like Finn the Human from Adventure Time. And I feel like this is a good start for me to do content on cartoons. I'm very passionate about cartoons. I was pretty much raised on old school cartoon network but we have a video about that coming out relatively soon. So when it comes to sad cartoon episodes, the first thing I think of is the Futurama episode, Jurassic Bark. And then of course, my uh, another thing I'm literally expecting to see is the Adventure Time episode, I Remember You. Oh, devastating episode of Adventure Time and cemented Marceline and Simon or the Ice King as two of my uh, favorite Adventure Time characters of all time. But before we get this started guys, what is a sad moment in a cartoon show that you remember? Something that may have upset you as a kid or sticks with you to this day? Leave me a comment down below and let's see if it appears on this list. You really have the superpowers. I pretended to be a Magnifico because I felt like you loved Ultra Lord more than me. Welcome to Watch Mo- before we carry on, can I just say that the saddest thing about Jimmy Neutron is the animation style. Oh, the early 2000s animation style scares me. Like the the, the kind of like 3D CGI style, I, d I don't like it. Uh, I have another video coming out on this soon. Um, I, was, I was thinking about the show, but ugly Martians. So if that's out already, I'll leave a thing up here but if not please look forward to that oh, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 saddest cartoon episodes what is he doing he's protecting us i am a ninjroid and ninja never quit for this list, we're looking at the most heart-wrenching episodes from animated series. We will be excluding anime, as that is a list for another day. Please note, a spoiler warning. So, they're, they're not counting animes, which, fair enough, otherwise this whole thing could be Full Metal Alchemist and Attack on Titan. But I feel like that's something we'll look at another day. And just remember, there probably are going to be spoilers in this, so, yeah. <laughs> is now in effect. Which of these episodes left you emotionally devastated? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, The Wedding Squanchers, Rick and Morty. If we come back to Earth, can my family have a normal life? Whether transforming the protagonist into a pickle or channel surfing, this Adult Swim cartoon tends to be more concerned with eliciting a laugh than a tear. An alcoholic mad scientist on the run from the Galactic Federation, Rick repeatedly and unapologetically drags the rest of the family, particularly... I mean, I love Rick and Morty. Love Rick and Morty. You can see in the background the, my collection of Rick Funkos. And for the most part, it is such a funny show. But my God, when it wants to get dark and it wants to get deep and it wants to upset you, it does. And the episode in particular, they're talking about the wedding squanches. It's the the ending scene um, when he turns himself in and he goes to prison, and nine inches nail nine inch nails hurt plays, and that song is a tear joker at the best of times. But in that situation, there, oh, it's a killer! It is a killer. Number nineteen, epilogue, Justice League Unlimited. Ooh. Did you stay with me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, I wasn't expecting it's a comic book a great series cartoons. The demise of a minor character who only appears in three episodes succeeds in coming across as tragic. Ace oh. is a powerful psychic capable of warping reality. As a child, the metahuman was subjected to governmental experimentation and ended up temporarily working for the Joker. Aware death is just around the corner due to an aneurysm, Ace's final hours are spent with Batman arguably the only person to ever treat the psychic as a human being rather than a weapon i've i've only ever seen that episode of justice league once once because th there are two things that will just always get me and that is a child dying in anything that that, that is a big no-no or an animal dying in anything like no get get out i i can't i can't do it i can't handle it and yeah, this episode of Justice League is an absolute killer. He sat with her until her time came. I'm well Number enough, yeah. 18, Remembrance of Courage Past. Courage the Cowardly Dog. 
You're supposed to catch the ball. Talk about finishing a series on a gut punch. So this Courage was the, the backstory creepy, for the, the titular the character, Quarry's the Cowardly Dog. Deeply moving. While some other segments are sad, nothing comes close to the flashback revealing how Courage meets Muriel. As a puppy, Courage basically witnesses the murder of his own parents at the hands of plausibly the worst like say, veterinarian kids, ever. Thankfully, dogs, the episode's no. conclusion is Just quite no. cathartic. But there's no forgetting the image of a crying baby Courage waving goodbye to a rocket carrying the dog's parents. Number 17, Weird Mageddon 3, Take Back the Falls, Gravity Falls. Oh, uh, hey there. I've, I've got to be completely honest here. Yeah. Um, I've never massively been into Gravity Falls. I, I binged it, and I think the fact that I binged it, like, in one or two days, I just didn't have any emotional attachment to it. So the finale really didn't get me at all. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I've missed out. On a lot with Gravity Falls because of that, but yeah. <laughs> Number 16, a regular epic final battle, regular show. Enough! This battle starts now! Before we carry on with this one, um, my, my two favorite cartoons of all time are Adventure Time and Regular Show, and I will at least once a, once a month, once a week, watch the final episode of regular show again just for the flash forward scenes it, i i just find it wholesome and nice uh i'm mentally not prepared to see the death of pops today so god why do this to me <laughs> Lasting for eight seasons and 261 episodes, 261 regular show episodes. needed to be almost perfect to live up to all the hype. If nothing the thing else, is, the regular show's finale was perfect. It was literally Andy perfect. Pops, and with the whole universe on the line, Pops ultimately concludes the only way to save everyone is to plunge both of them into the sun. The minute you let me go, I'm gonna blast you into nothing. I'm not letting go. So I'm not going to let go. The battle's aftermath is also a tearjerker, culminating in a twenty-five this scene, year time this scene. skip. The time skip. I love it. I love it so much. Back together for Look at a him. Reunion. <laughs> Number fifteen. Code of Hero. Beast Wars. Transformers. Destiny. Remember earlier when I said I, I hate late night is early two thousand CGI style cartoons. I, I've obviously got no emotional attachment to this because I hate this style of animation. I don't even think it looked good for its time. So I have literally no emotional attachment. We're just going to skip ahead. <laughs> Number 14, Rose's Scabbard, Steven Universe. Sometimes I wonder if she can see me. I find eyes. literally Everyone most of Steven of Universe differently. depressing. Girl, Steven Universe me hurt me in so many ways at so many times. Sometimes. You even sound like her. In oh. Pearl's case, she pushes away her friend Stephen, the son of a woman she followed, respected, and loved deeply. After accompanying the crystal gems to the strawberry battlefield, Stephen begins to uncover many new truths about his late mother and starts to see that Pearl never got the closure she needed on their relationship. Why'd she keep so many secrets? She had to, Stephen. It's the mark of a great leader. This becomes even clearer when Pearl lashes out after discovering that Rose may have kept secrets from her. She probably just wanted to protect you like everyone else. What do you know? You've never even met her! Denying the fact... It's that bit. Like... The way she lashes out at Stephen absolutely kills me there. I've... Wait... I've got no words. Emotional damage! Number 13, Game Over. Reboot. Uh, uh, You're all I have left. Uh, now you be careful uh, out there. I don't know what happened. Uh, don't get all mushy on me. You're a commander, uh, remember? Unfortunately... That is an ugly animation style and I don't like it. <laughs> and I was sad about Game Over. Let's just look at it. It's, it's terrible looking. Duh. We're going to skip over this one. <laughs> Number 12, Heart of Ice, Batman the Animated Series. Humanity, compassion, charity, 
Where were those pretty words when she needed to hear them? Some Art of Ice is literally the best Mr. Freeze storyline in any media. Like, okay, yeah, we could all laugh and joke, you know, Arnold's thoughts. Uh, uh, Arnie, Mr. Freeze, yeah, he's funny, time to chill out, all of that. This is so dark, so deep, so true to the comics. Batman the Animated Series was absolutely brilliant and I stand my ground when I say that Batman the Animated Series is the best Batman animated series, best Batman in media. Batman villains just want to watch the world burn. Some want to see it freeze. But the reason why might surprise you. Take it easy, man. I got you. Just wants to bring back his wife. Just just wants to bring back his wife. He should have been more careful. The Dark Knight has a tendency to fight baddies that are victims of circumstance. Take Mary Dahl, for example, whose eternal youth was more cursed than blessing. However, Heart of Ice sees the caped crusader face the diabolical Mr. Freeze. Freeze! That's Mr. Freeze to you. The daytime Emmy Award-winning episode follows Batman as he chases this former Gothcorp scientist, whom he discovers is solely seeking revenge on Gothcorp CEO Ferris Boyle for turning him into a monster and essentially sentencing his wife to death. Night, I mean to pay back the man who ruined my life. I love this episode so much. Ultimately, if you've Batman never seen it, give it a watch. It is the best Mr. Freeze storyline. Where Freeze can only mourn his loved one. I can only beg your forgiveness and pray you hear me somehow. Number Perfect. 11, I Remember You, Adventure Time. Stop acting crazy. I just want to be loved. Sometimes it's... Um, I want to take over here for a minute. I said at the beginning that I fully expected this episode on here. And at a place at number 11, yeah, that is pretty much where I wanted to see it. The storyline between Ice King and Marceline is one of my favourites in Adventure Time. Their relationship, everything that those two have been to together, and then Simon's descent into madness. And it's revealed in this episode for the first time. And the song, I Remember You, um, and Nuts that they sing, I, I can't listen to those songs without tearing up. There is a reason... The Adventure Time is one of my favourite cartoons of all time and this episode is up there with those reasons. It takes a true friend to remind you of who you really are. Do you like me? Of course I of course do, I like you. Jerk. In a desperate attempt to win the affection of a princess, as is his way, the Ice King seeks out Marceline the Vampire Queen to help him write a song. Wow, I love that. Are we gonna get the song? This songwriting session gets all too real when Marceline tries to remind the wizard of his life before he found the magic crown that drove him nuts and erased his memories. This magic keeps me alive. alive. But it's making, but it's me, making crazy. me crazy. And I need to and save, I you. save you. But who's gonna save me? Saddened by the reality of the situation, Marceline opts to bond with her old friend the only way she can, and we're left watching a touching flashback scene where we see how the two met and became friends in the aftermath of the Mushroom War. If, if that is the only Adventure Time episode on this list, then I'm, I'm happy. With that, I'm, I, I'm tearing up already. Like, oh, I love it so much. <laughs> I never got into this version Ninja of Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Number nine, free church. They, they killed off. They killed off Splinter in, in that version. That is crazy. I need to I need to watch this version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It sounds dark. It sounds gritty. It sounds like everything I want to see in a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon. Screw the laid back 80s, 90s version. I'm watching this version now. Oh my god, Bojack Horseman. Uh, Bojack Horseman is just depressing. <laughs> I, I can't think of a word for it. There are bits of Bojack Horseman that make me laugh. 
But overall, Bojack Horseman is just a very depressing show. <laughs> churro. Bojack Horseman. My mom died and all I got was this free churro. Praised for its honest depiction of depression, substance use disorder, and various other challenging subjects. I suppose that is the point. It is supposed to be depression. <laughs> depressing. Things, free oh. churros and Ted Danson's oh. 90s sitcom Becker. Honestly, Season when I watched Bojack Horseman, Arrow I suggested suggested had to watch there was more to something more lighthearted afterwards, like Spongebob, but to make myself feel better. Bojack remain estranged until the very end. Taking place during Beatrice's apparent funeral, Free Churro frames Bojack's troubled childhood through an ongoing eulogy. Like always, Bojack Horseman finds a way to throw in a few laugh out loud moments, but a somber tone is maintained throughout the entire episode. Because now I know I will never have a mother who looks at me from across the room and says, Bojack Horseman, I see you. Number eight, the tales of Ba Sing Se. I Avatar, can't do this, the last no. I can't do this. I can't do. I can't do Avatar: The Last Airbender. I'm still not over it. I'm still not over it. <sighs> Damn it! Yeah, I could have helped you. Split into six vignettes, the tales of Ba Sing Se is often quite lighthearted. Then you get to the tale of Iroh. This segment mainly consists Uncle of Iroh. Zuko's uncle helping strangers while traveling through Ba Sing Se. All these sweet acts of kindness lead to Iroh leaving town to memorialize the birthday of his late son, who died during a siege prior to the events of the cartoon. There will not be a single dry eye during Iroh's tearful rendition of Leaves from the Vine. Never. Avatar The Last Airbender's vignette closes with a tribute to Iroh's voice actor, Mako Iwamatsu, who passed away a couple of months prior to the episode's airing. Number 7. Have you seen this snail? SpongeBob SquarePants. Gary runs away might not seem like an especially creative premise, but Sp it's a weird episode, isn't it? Really, because like it's SpongeBob. You're not you're not going into SpongeBob expecting to feel anything. You're going into SpongeBob, you know, expecting a laugh, expecting some silly shenanigans. But the episode where Gary runs away and SpongeBob is basically just neglected his pet for an entire episode. It is. It goes back to what I said earlier, doesn't it? You, you don't mess with kids. You don't mess with the animals. Uh, Gary basically is a cat, so, you know. <laughs> SpongeBob SquarePants produced an absolute gem of an episode. Due to being distracted by a meaningless task, SpongeBob forgets to feed Gary, prompting the snail to pack and leave. Bye, Gary. Eventually, it's SpongeBob Gary's sad little Gary face. And becomes increasingly distraught at the thought of never seeing the snail again. Come on, Pat, just take these flyers and hand them out. Along with an awesome antagonist in Granny, Have You Seen This Snail contains one of the cartoon's most extraordinary songs in the depressing Gary Come Home. If it was not for the happy ending, have you seen this snail may have taken first place. If only I could hear you meow one last time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that. Number See six, it. Kenny dies, South Park. Kenny sick? Oh God, yeah, I actually sick. forgot they During killed the off Kenny for quite seasons, a while. South Park barely allowed an episode to pass without killing Kenny. After rendering and death completely the meaningless, fact that it was permanent. Vibes, Kenny dies arrived to tear every fan's heart out. Oh. Hospitalized with a terminal you, illness, I don't think anyone was expecting it back then. Forcing the boys to come to terms with mortality. I know it's tough, okay? I know. But we have to be tough right now. Even though Cartman spends the majority of the episode attempting to find a cure, just as the title prophesies, oh my Kenny God. eventually dies, and nothing about the moment is treated as a joke. I didn't get to see him. I didn't get to say goodbye. The boys grieve, Stan questions God, and Cartman duplicates a Shakey's pizza. Season 15's You're Getting Old sobering ending also merits a special mention. Number five, a Charlie Brown Christmas. A Char now, I, I grew up in the UK and I, in Britain. I grew up in England and I don't think Charlie Brown and Snoopy were as big here as they are in the US. Obviously, you guys have like what the Thanksgiving one, the Christmas one, stuff like that. I didn't grow up with Charlie Brown. I'd barely seen any Charlie Brown. I've got, I've got a few pieces of Snoopy clothing and Snoopy merchandise, but I'm not massively into it. So I'm just going to skip over this one because I don't feel like I can appreciate anything they're going to say because, I, I, like I said, I, it's just not something that we had over here. Number four, Life of Brian, Family Guy. Oh We're my God. Is him, Peter? We're all gonna miss him very much. After one of their many trips to the past goes awry, you don't 
mess with dogs and you don't mess with kids and when they killed brian off i i know i know it wasn't permanent okay i know it wasn't permanent but it felt like it was permanent at the time and when they killed brian off they they broke both those rules because they messed with kids and they messed with dogs yeah brian dying in itself is pretty damn upsetting but stewie's reaction is absolutely heartbreaking and I, I, to this day, I still hate seeing those Family Guy episodes where Brian's not in it and they replaced him with Vinny. Uh, that's probably a really stupid thing to get upset about. But, oh, I just I hate them so much. And, oh my God, uh, that that scene, um, the, the Christmas one, where Santa asks Stewie what he wants and Stewie replies, I want Brian! <laughs> it hurts me on an emotional level. <laughs> But I digress, let's carry on. <laughs> Stewie and Brian agree to destroy their time machine. This time machine has almost killed us a hundred times, Brian. And yesterday was just too close a call. However, fate is cruel, and Stewie immediately regrets this decision when Brian is struck by a car and critically injured, ultimately uttering his last words from the operating table. You, you've given me a wonderful life. I love you all. Reality sets in for Stewie when he realizes that repairing the time machine is impossible, and so the grieving process must begin. Oh dear, Rupert. Without those capacitors, it'll be completely impossible to build a functioning time machine. I guess that means Brian has really gone for good. To help the family cope with their loss, Lois and Peter bring home a new dog named Vinny. But while he is able to emote with Stewie about his lost friend, Vinny can't replace the void left by Brian in the Chris Griffin Vinny household. is terrible. My best friend. You're not supposed to lose your best friend at my age. You're not supposed to lose him ever. <laughs> Number three, Mother Simpson, The Simpsons. Well, how about this? This thing says my mother's still alive. She died when I was a kid. When a show's on as long as The Simpsons, it's bound to turn to the bittersweet every no, now and then. No, no, no. I'm sorry I never come to see you. I'm just not a cemetery person. The I was only a little kid the first time I saw this episode, and I didn't really have much concept over life and death and things like that. So this this episode was an eye opener for me. I'll say that much. Um, Any time that Homer's mother is brought up in Simpsons is always devastating. There are a lot, and I mean a lot, of emotional and upsetting Simpsons episodes out there. But if they were going to pick one, then I guess this is the one they definitely should have gone with. The moment when Lisa says goodbye to her substitute teacher always gets us sniffling. But it's the mystery you never knew you wanted solved surrounding the whereabouts of Homer's mother that makes our list. I can't believe you're here. Dad always told me you died while I was at the movie. This melancholic episode sees Homer joyfully reunited with his long-lost mother Mona after 27 years. Hey everybody, I got a big surprise for you. Presenting... My mother! The two make up for lost time, but it's soon Frozen revealed memory. that it's Mona's troubled history with the law that's kept her away so long, and it forces her away again, leaving her son with a hole in his heart. Don't worry, Homer. You'll always be a part of me. Don't! <laughs> At least this time, however, they're that's able to wholesome, share man. a that heartfelt wholesome. goodbye. At least this time I'm awake for your goodbye. Oh, Homer. Oh, Homer. Number two, Mother's Day, Rugrats. The first time I saw my mom, I think I was in a fish tank or something. Nothing prepares you for the heartbreaking reality of having to reveal this kind of truth to your child. It's all right, Chucky. Don't be scared. The babies celebrate their first Mother's Day experience. Anything in Rugrats involving Chucky and Chucky's dad and the entirety of the Rugrats in Paris movie. Like I've said so many times during this video, kids, animals and get ouch experience by crafting presents for their beloved moms we, still got to present for we haven't got to number baby. one yet and we've not had jurassic ball but this so only draws attention I, to the fact that Chucky i'm 99 percent sure the episode sees him so it's going to be jurassic Ball. Mom and thinking about what he's missing i wish i could remember stuff like that don't you remember ever having a mom nope 
It Ouch. turns out that, due to Chucky's tender age, his father has withheld information about his son's mother, hoping he could shield him from the pain of missing her. Chucky, this is your body. With support from the other parents, Chaz decides to introduce Chucky to his mother via a box of her belongings. Go ahead. We dare you not to cry. My sweet little I'm Chucky. trying not to. Though I must leave you behind me, this poem will tell you where you always can find me. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest... And before we continue... Remember to subscribe to this channel, the subscribe button is down there, ring that bell icon, I'm going to be uploading more regularly now, um, we're doing cartoon, video game, and anime content, so if you're into any one of those three things, this is the channel for you. Number one, Jurassic Park, Futurama. I called it, from the beginning of this video, before I even press play, I called it, because there is not one person out there that has not heard of this episode, or watched this episode, and has not bowled their eyes out. Jurassic Park is the saddest, not, not, apparently not just the saddest cartoon episode ever, it is the saddest. Uh, <laughs> Jurassic Park is apparently not only the saddest Futurama episode ever, like I said at the beginning, it is the saddest cartoon episode ever. Oh. Boy, Seymour, right here waiting for me as always. If you're ever given the opportunity to travel a thousand years into the future, consider what you might be leaving behind. I won't be gone long, Seymour. Just wait here till I come back. In pizza delivery boy Philip J. Fry's case, one thing he abandoned was his lucky seven-leaf clover. But fortunately, as we learn in another tear-jerking episode, his nephew put that to good use. But Fry also left his dog Seymour back in the year 2000. His name was Seymour. He was once intimate with the leg of a wandering saxophonist. <laughs> he had wet dog smell, even when dry, and he was not above chasing the number 29 bus. When he unearths a fossil of his long lost pal in the 31st I century, can't, I Fry can't decides to bring Seymour back as a clone. So will Seymour remember how to sing Walking on Sunshine? Amazingly, yes. However, he ultimately decides against the procedure, thinking that the pooch will have forgotten their friendship. I'll never forget him, but he forgot me a long, long time ago. All it takes is one heart-wrenching oh. flashback for us to learn that he couldn't be further from the truth. What's he so worked up about? He's just upset because our boy's missing. Come on, y'all. I think that's the worst bit. Like, Fry could have brought him back and it would have been great, but... <sighs> It was just too stupid to think that his dog would remember him. Grown rat, lead us to Philip. So that was this week's Mojo Monday, and I have to say I agreed with every choice on that list. I agreed with the placement of them. Um, they picked the, the one of the saddest um, Simpsons episodes. They picked the saddest Adventure Time episode, the saddest Steven Universe episode. The saddest regular show episode and definitely the saddest Futurama episode. Oh god, I'm gonna go and eat a bucket of ice cream now and cheer up. I I, I usually dance in the background as the end screen comes up. But guys, I'm just I'm I'm not feeling that today. I'm if this video has left you feeling as down in the dumps and as depressed as I am, then smash that subscribe button. Smash that like button. <laughs> I'll be back with more content soon. I, until I can think of a catchphrase, I'll see you next time.